We will now look at how the flight guidance achieves its automatic thrust control function, the auto thrust system or auto thrust. The auto thrust can work in two different modes. Speed mode, the auto thrust continuously adjusts the thrust in order to maintain a target speed or Mach, e.g. during cruise or approach. Thrust mode, the auto thrust sets a given thrust, e.g. max climb or idle. The auto thrust modes are automatically linked to autopilot flight director vertical modes. When autopilot flight director vertical mode controls a trajectory, e.g. altitude hold, vertical speed, glide slope, the auto thrust is in speed mode. When autopilot flight director vertical mode adjusts the aircraft pitch in order to keep a target speed or Mach, e.g. climb, descent, the auto thrust is in thrust mode. The main auto thrust controls available for the pilots are the thrust levers. On the Airbus fly-by-wire family, the auto thrust does not back drive the thrust levers while it adjusts the thrust. Let's have a closer look at them. When the aha thrust is off, the crew controls the thrust as usual by moving the thrust levers over a quadrant. For forward thrust, this quadrant carries four physical deadens or stops, which are idle, climb for max climb thrust, flex MCT for flex thrust at takeoff or max continuous thrust, toga for max takeoff or go around thrust. The auto thrust can only work when the thrust levers are set forward of the idle detent and up to the climb detent or MCT detent in case of engine failure. If the thrust levers are set by the pilot in the reverse position, the auto thrust cannot operate. Note the alpha floor function is an exception which will be covered later on. When auto thrust is on, the thrust lever position determines the maximum thrust which can be commanded by the auto thrust, for example, to accelerate in speed mode. On the thrust gauge, which we will be talking about in the engine chapter, the thrust lever position is indicated by a symbol. It materializes the maximum thrust available for the auto thrust in a normal operation. The auto thrust has three states. It can be either disconnected or off, armed, ready to be set to on by a specific pilot action on the thrust levers, active or on. Let's see these states in more detail. We are taxiing to the runway. Because we are on the ground, the auto thrust is necessarily disconnected. This is confirmed by the absence of any auto thrust related indications on the FMA and by the extinguished auto thrust push button on the FCU. Thrust is manually adjusted by the crew as required to taxi the aircraft. You are cleared for takeoff. The pilot flying must manually set the thrust levers to flex or toga to initiate the takeoff roll. Click on the thrust levers to initiate the takeoff roll. As soon as the thrust levers are set in the toga position, the FMA shows auto thrust blue, indicating that auto thrust is armed, manual toga white indicating that the pilot manually controls the thrust via the thrust levers set in TOGA. Note, TOGA is the maximum thrust available for takeoff. At the same time on the FCU, the auto thrust push button light illuminates in green.
The fact that the autothrust is armed means that it is ready to be engaged by a pilot action on the thrust levers. Note that when the autothrust is armed, the pilot has manual control on the thrust with the thrust levers. Crossing the thrust reduction altitude, thrust red altitude, the pilot must manually set the thrust levers to climb detente. On the FM, a flashing lever climb prompts the pilot to set the thrust levers back into climb detente. We will set climb thrust for you. Notice that on the FMA, autothrust white indicates that the autothrust is on. Thrust climb green indicates that the autothrust is in thrust mode. Since the thrust levers are set to climb and the autopilot commands a climb mode, the autothrust commands thrust climb. The white boxes around the modes highlight the fact that a mode change has occurred on the FMA. Note, the Autopilot 1 vertical mode adjusts the pitch to maintain the takeoff schedule target speed. In normal operation, when autothrust is on, the levers are left in the climb detent throughout the flight until the flare. The autothrust adjusts the thrust as required between idle and max climb, but the thrust levers, not being back driven by the autothrust, remain in the climb detent as set by the pilots. Crossing the acceleration altitude, ac alt, the FM climb phase is initiated. The autothrust maintains climb thrust, while the vertical mode, climb, adjusts the pitch to accelerate the aircraft towards the new speed target. The initial climb speed here is 250 knots. If at any moment the pilot needs some additional thrust, he will push the thrust levers forward from climb detent. He will then manually control the thrust. In that case, manual thrust is displayed in white on the FMA. Autothrust is displayed in blue since the autothrust is armed. Whenever the pilot brings the thrust levers back into climb detente, the autothrust is automatically back on in the applicable mode. Note that the autothrust may be on in flight, provided the thrust levers are set above idle to climb detente, all engines operating, or above idle to MCT, one engine inoperative. Beyond these deadens, the pilot has manual control on the thrust. When the aircraft reaches the target altitude, autopilot flight director switches to altitude mode. The autothrust switches to speed, MAC mode, as indicated on the FMA. In this mode, the autothrust continuously adjusts the thrust to maintain the target speed, MAC. Autothrust is also in speed mode when autopilot flight director vertical modes are vertical speed or flight path angle, GS and generally during the approach. We are now in approach, just before flare. You fly the aircraft manually with the autothrust engaged. Note that the autothrust is in speed mode. During a hand-flown flare, the pilot has to reduce the thrust for landing. He will do so by bringing the thrust levers back to idle at about 20 feet. Note, if he does not do so, the autothrust will increase thrust to maintain the speed. A retard auto callout comes up at about 20 feet as a reminder to retard the thrust levers. Click on the thrust. Thrust levers are now set to idle. This turns the autothrust off. Note that 
On the FMA, the white autothrust indication is no longer displayed. The FMA autothrust column is blank. On the FCU, the autothrust push button is now extinguished. We have just seen how to turn the autothrust off by setting the thrust levers back to idle for landing. The recommended procedure to set the autothrust off in flight in order to avoid any thrust change at autothrust disconnection is 1. To move the thrust levers back so that the thrust lever position symbol roughly matches the present N1 or EPR. 2. To press the instinctive disconnect push button located on the thrust levers. Note. Pressing at least one push button for more than 15 seconds will inhibit the auto thrust, including alpha floor protection, for the remainder of the flight. When the auto thrust is off during flight, in order to turn it on again, press the auto thrust push button on the FCU with the thrust levers in or below climb detent. Note. You can disconnect the auto thrust by pressing the auto thrust push button on the FCU. This is not the standard recommended procedure.